Hi, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And I did a video about the Dell balls and springs and all the rest of it. And then I said, let's do a video about how little... It's not how little people care about unsprung and sprung mass. It's just out of the list of priorities of things, it is not very high. People talk about perimeter discs and centrifugal forces and stuff. Centrifugal forces of wheels, basically the gyroscope effect and stuff, can be a good thing. You just have to lean over a bit more. Fucking who cares about that? Really, it doesn't matter. If you look at MotoGP discs, they are fucking nearly the size of perimeter discs anyway. Any road. So, let's talk about this unsprung sprung mass thing. So, for those who don't know, basically, you have, in re relation to suspension and stuff, you have your motorcycle, the majority of it, including you, up here. This has mass. And so do you. <laughs> and then you have your wheel, and this also has mass. And included in this, you have your bottom of your forks, you have your brake caliper, you have your brake disc, you have all your wheel bearings, and so on. We're going to look at the front in this example. And for the rear, no, we'll do the rear as well. For the rear, you have your wheel, you have your brake caliper, you have your disc, you have all your bearings, you have your sprocket, and then you have your swing arm. Now, the swing arm's a bit of a funny one because that is something you can divide down the middle because it stays basically in the same place. It just moves around a pivot. The other thing you've got to include in this is the bottom half of your suspension. So we use the fork body example here. So you'll have... Uh, the bottom part of your shock where your mounting hole is and then you'll have a cush lever Stuff like that, dog bones and so on and atta um, uh, Attachment points and all the rest of it to your swing arm now This whole unsprung mass ratio thing is you have the mass here, which is above So you have this mass here, which is your sprung mass, which means basically it sits on top of a spring and then all this down here, this stuff, this is your unsprung mass. Now, the, the weird thing about unsprung and sprung mass is it depends in, it's a dynamic system, so it depends how it's working. Suspension works in two ways. One way, the ground can disappear from you and the suspension will basically fall into that, but the majority of the falling is done by the bike. A lot of the time it's also taking up shock. So suspensions work in both ways. They track the road and can move up and down to follow it. Sometimes the force is coming from below, sometimes the force is coming from the top. When you basically slam on your brakes, all your mass moves forward and it compresses your forks. This is one of the problems with forks, which we'll go into a later video. Um, but there the force on the spring is coming from the actual motorcycle. If you jump into the air, all of a sudden it's unloaded and the spring pushes the wheel bloody out, if you get what I mean when you're doing dirt bikes and stuff like that. But, let's have a look at why unsprung and sprung mass is not as important as most people think it is. So the best example for this is we can look at, um, basically, what you want to do is you want to basically, supposedly, is reduce your unsprung mass. Right, the stuff that doesn't move, basically your wheels and everything that doesn't move your suspension in one dynamic system, that's why it doesn't make any sense. But uh, the whole point is, is you wanna make the mass on top bigger and you wanna make your unsprung mass smaller. This is what everyone starts crying about unsprung mass. Oh no, you can't do that because it increases your unsprung mass, blah, 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 blah. So this is good, we wanna increase our sprung mass. And if you talk to everyone, they will say, we want to decrease our unsprung mass. Apart from MotoGP, World Superbike, and nearly every bike manufacturer ever made. Every bike ever made, should I say. The common um, route of front suspension, uh, designs and geometry and all the rest of it, is that they now have the fork body in the actual part of this. So the fork body, the aluminium tube, that is really light, or if you're in MotoGP, the carbon fibre tube nowadays, this light bit has now joined the, uh, un the sprung mass section, and the stanchion, that big fucking heavy stainless steel tube, is now part of the unsprung mass. Uh, the, the unsprung mass. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why are USD forks, well, upside down for one, why are they putting more unsprung mass 
it doesn't make any sense. The other thing you can look at the other side as well for your rear suspension. So for your rear suspension, it is basically made up of your top mounting point, the top of your shock, a dampener rod in the middle, a spring like this. You'll have possibly a cush drive. Oh, whoa, fucking what am I doing? A cush drive like this with a pivot in here, another bar here, or maybe you have a dog bone like this. There's all sorts of different arrangements. There's many ways you can skin this cat. Well, hang about. If we split our suspension in two, this is uh, our sprung mass. This is our unsprung mass. Well, hang about. We've got suspension here. We've got a crush lever. We've got our dog bones. We've got all our fucking bearings. This is part of the unsprung mass thing. This is increasing unsprung mass. The reason is all these things happen this way is quite simple. Now, they do try and move the unsprung mass, all this unsprung mass, closer to the pivotal point of the swing arm. Fucking pen. They do try and move it that way towards the end of the swing arm. The reason why they do this is because it doesn't have so much travel, which means it doesn't have as much inertia when it actually travels. If you hang it all the way out, it's going to basically displace a lot, and that's a lot of movement. There's a lot of momentum there to try and shift stuff. That is what dampens your suspension, or should I say, makes your suspension less responsive. If they move all this shit in right close to the pivot point, then the degree, the arcs of degree that this swing arm flaps around in, it's heavier here and a lot lighter here, so it can be more responsive. But the fact of the matter is, they could quite easily just flip this arrangement upside down, but they don't. And why don't they? Well, usually a lot of the time is there's fuck all in your swing arm. It's basically room considerations. Now they could do this and they have done this before, but just with the front forks and your stanchions, what is important with your front forks, see this is a Hayabusa fork, you can see that this is the top body, this is the aluminium bit, this is light, the fucking heavy bit, I can feel it, the heavy bit is this fucking stanchion in here, which is a part of all this arrangement and all the rest of it. They have put this at the bottom, increasing unsprung mass because your spring lives in between them. Why have they done that? Well, because fork stiffness is more important, because they can go to bigger diameter tubes, because they are not restricted by how much of a basically where the axle goes and all the rest of it so they are not bothered basically what i'm saying is is that fork stiffness is more important than unsprung mass when it comes to rear suspension fucking room and how where you can place things and all the rest of it, where the room to put these things is more important than unsprung mass it just shows you that basically unsprung mass is on the list but it's very much down at the bottom where they can move this right close to the pivot point, that's one of the ways that they do care about uh, suspension sensitivity and stuff like that. It basically just showing you that they really don't fucking care. If you look at a lot of your adjustable forks and stuff, they have the cartridges and ad adjusters and stuff. At the bottom, part of the unsprung mass, they could, they could, you know, through design, put it on the sprung mass side, but they don't. Just because it is easier, it is a packaging concern. So packaging concerns are more important than sprung and unsprung mass. Unsprung mass has its place. What I'm saying is people eking over fucking 30, 40, maybe 100 grams, stuff like that. They don't really care. And there's some examples of real world stuff. MotoGP, they have absolute, they can build whatever the fuck they want. And they decide to do it this way. Fork stiffness, packaging concerns, room all the rest of it they are more bothered about getting all this stuff in and so on and reducing wheelbase sizes and all that kind of shite than they are unsprung mass hope that makes sense we'll talk more about gyroscopic effects we'll also talk about the reverse cranking of an engine and what difference that makes and stuff like that hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit